Cause I'm kin, something, and I wanna be a tin. And <laughs> I just wanna have a tan. Wait, I don't know the words. I don't know the words. Damn. It was good. good. Morning, good afternoon, good night. Whenever you're listening to this, y'all, welcome to the Pretty Petty Podcast. My name is Mercedes, and I'm not wearing pants. What? And I'm Mira and Jesus Christ. Not you over here naked. I'm wearing, I, it's a long shirt. I'm a long shirt I fan. Mean, I mean, you cozy. So that's all that really matters. Cozy and comfortable. I, I get it. Now I got I, Beyonce stuck in my head. Are you still going to get her hair care? Uh, I may or may not. I don't know what the hell I'm finna do with my hair. I'm ready to cut it all off, to be honest. Twins. I'm tired. Like, I know I got a dome piece on me, but I, I can't do this no more. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> I, I thought I wanted long hair and then I, I grew my hair out and I'm like, I'm tired of this. I don't feel like it. So I've always yeah, felt like yeah. black women, we should get a stipend or get like pay for a part-time job for having our hair. I'm just saying it takes it takes it's a village. Too much. Yo, I seen this lady on TikTok that was like, is there a program where I could get paid for doing my kids hair and her daughter's hair is all down her back? She's like, I'm serious. Like the amount of time, effort, and energy this takes, this needs a separate paycheck cuz I'm sick of this shit. Um, so let's do let's do a check. How you, how has your week been? How you been feeling? It's been all right. Um, got me some edibles, so I'm a little bit happy, <laughs> a little bit happier. <laughs> um, got to spend time with some friends and get some rest. Uh, the process of trying to be a normal, I guess, a normally sleeping person has been beating my ass, but I've been I've been doing good. You know, it just sucks when you kind of have a routine and then one little thing knocks you out of it, and then yeah. you gotta like fight back to get to that routine. It's it's hard. Um. But the sleep's been hitting. Um, I'm good. I did a Beyonce cosplay this week. It was my first you cosplay. Did. I saw it and it looked really good. I was like, damn, Thanks, not you got the same outfit and everything. I was like, wait a minute. Okay, if creativity. I, listen, I I when I tell you it was 45 minutes till I was supposed to go live, and I was like, oh, I probably should take a shower and start getting ready. And I was not prepared for how much I was not going to look like Beyonce. I got the outfit down, but the makeup, <laughs> I was totally off, but it's fine. <laughs> I liked it. It was fun. Um, I'm glad my first cosplay could be of the queen. So Yeah, that shit was good. I was like, damn, that was a that was a pretty, I would say, creative, like quick on your feet. You know what I'm saying? Especially since she just did that shit, like very recently. I'm like, yeah, no, that was fire. And I'm returning it all back to Amazon because I what? Ain't shit. Oh my um, God. Them headphones was trash. I was what like, headphones? I remember streaming. Wait, and I was like, ones, are you talking the, about the pink? The pink with cat ears, they're so horrible. I couldn't even get game audio to play. I had to wear earbuds inside of the headphones to are hear Are those a computer. name brand, name brand, or did you get like a. Girl, please. I think the ones that Beyonce was wearing were from like Razor or like an actual okay, company. Those the those ones like I got. Razor ones? Because I have the Razor ones in the closet. Nah, these were $30. Uh, oh, but oh. I would I would assume that it would at least pick up the audio. I didn't expect something. it. Like, mm-hmm. Something. Yeah. But, and then, I cannot imagine streaming in a turtleneck and a fleece jacket. I remember I was like, ain't no way Beyonce. <laughs> she looks uncomfortable. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> I was like, all this equipment, all them mo- all these monitors, and Pete, listen. Nah, it was too hot. Um, But yeah, it was good. It is Monday, March 11th. Mm-hmm. Do you know where your children are? Oh, uh, I need to talk about this. Love Uh-oh. is blind. The show that you refuse oh. to watch. I uh, Yeah, and, and every clip I see, I, I remember why. Because why would that dude do that shit? Why would he do that? I knew he was going to do that. And I cannot believe that she was surprised that... Okay, so... Okay, okay. So I'm not going to spend like a whole lot of time talking about this. I just want to say I was on the treadmill the while I was watching this. And um, that's my rule now. If I'm going to watch trash or reality television like Love is Blind, I have to do it while I'm working out. So I was working out watching this and old dude got on the altar and tell me mm-hmm. why she got up there. And she's like, I do. I love you. In every mood, in every way, you my chocolate king, whatever the fuck she said. Oh and then God. this nigga looked at her with a smile on his face. And then he does like this, like minute, like shaking no in his head. Like you can barely see it. Like he was trying to tell her, but he was smiling big. 
So it was like mixed messages. And then she's like, he seemed happy that she, it was, she said yes, only for him to say no. And then to come to find out they still together. I'd have punched him in his face. Um, I need for her to get some self-esteem. She's a nice looking woman. You can do better than that. Cause I don't understand how somebody can embarrass you so loudly and so publicly and globally like that. And you just like, Hey, I'm going to, you know, I'm still going to fuck with you anyway. I, I saw that and I was disgusted. I can't can't say no before that. And his daddy, I remember sitting there thinking this is a textbook narcissist. I never heard of a nigga on their son's wedding day talking about themselves this much. It was wild. Mm. Um, and then Megan Fox Megan Fox got dumped before they even got to the altar. Yeah, because they sitting outside. Listen, Jimmy and shit, they sitting outside, right? They rented out this whole theme park. It's wild. I don't think anybody oh, picked wow. this up. They're at a theme park and they're the only people there. I was like, that's not normal. But they sitting outside and he's like, so how do you feel? You think we're going to get married? You think you're going to say yes? And mm-hmm. she's like, well, the way I feel right now, yes, I see you as my husband for the rest of my life. He's like, okay, bad, bad, bad. It's over. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> why, why are these dudes, why are these dudes waiting Yo. to reject? Like, there's a difference between like ending it and then just waiting so you can reject it. I'm like, bro. Yo. He's thinking like that, bad. I He's understand that people need to express more vulnerability, but God damn, it's like, what is this about? Um, I think I would pull a Jocelyn Hernandez. You remember that uh scene from Love and Hip Hop? When she she jumped over that couch, started wailing on Stevie ass. I, okay. I, I can see myself on that type of time. Did you see Bad Girls, Baddies West versus Jocelyn's Cabaret Wildin' Out special? No, what? Did they you see that? a clip of it? No, oh, I, I saw, saw Baddies Caribbean. Apparently they got Caribbean Baddies okay. Wildin'. No, I did not. When the fuck did they do that crossover? Okay, number one, we need to go half on a Zeus <laughs> subscription um, <laughs> because I haven't seen, I've only seen clips. But yes, Nick Cannon... Me is did a wild announced special that clearly won't ever be on MTV because of the hijinks that ensued. Oh on God. one side, it's Natalie Nunn and all of her minions, like her Sean Rock sister and all of them on one side, versus Jocelyn's cabaret and all of them strippers, right? The scene that stuck out to me was Natalie Nunn is calling out Jocelyn for having uh, no, Jocelyn is calling out Natalie Nunn for having an OnlyFans. And she said, the way that you was attacking your clit, you should be charged or something, something like that. What? And Natalie Nunn is like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. Me, myself, Mercedes, I have seen video and pictures of Natalie Nunn masturbating and I have never looked for it. So I don't know which Jocelyn said was true. Oh my God. And then Natalie Nunn says something to her. I can't remember what it was, but it wasn't as good of a burn. Jocelyn took her hand and mushed Natalie in the face so hard. She flew back. Security came through, separated them. She is so high on cocaine. Jocelyn literally starts screaming, who got the coke? Who got the next line? Who got the next line? Oh, and wow. I'm like, and then the next scene, she, I remember I saw a clip. She's like, everybody in the world knows I do, do cocaine. Everybody know. Ain't no, anybody hide nothing over here? You know, secret. I was like, hey, look. And Natalie talking about how she got an open marriage, but she don't use the word open marriage. She said um, that her, sometimes she just need a break. And so she tells her husband, you go do what you want to do and I'm going to do what I want to do and we can reconvene whenever. Still stay in the same house, but they just fucking different people. That's so messy. I, I Jesus like, Christ. I, but, um, okay. I highly recommend when I get that clip because the way she mushed Natalie in the face. I'm telling you, she not and fucking And walked with. away. Knowing she wasn't going to get hit back. That's what I'm saying. She not fucking with Jocelyn, not with no comebacks or no wit, and especially not physically. Jocelyn beat up niggas. So, mm-hmm. yo, Jocelyn was putting them beats on Stevie. I was like, oh. Jocelyn do know how to pick, though, because the one person who talked shit to Jocelyn that I saw in the clip mm-hmm. was Krishan's sister, mm-hmm. who was a known MMX fighter. Like, she, she beat bitches down. And she ain't talked um, to her. And she, Christian's sister said, I, I'm sorry, I don't know the girl's name, but she talked shit to Jocelyn and Jocelyn just rolled her eyes. I'm like, listen, oh, <laughs> you know who to fight, who not to fight. Oh, not her being one of those. Oh, um, God. 
But yeah, that had reminded me. Oh, uh, did you ever watch Real World Road Rules back in the day, child? I, I did, but I don't remember any of it. <laughs> you remember Coral? I remember her name, but I don't remember. It's like, I, like it's all a blur to me. She was the queen of the challenge. The only reason why I ask is because mm-hmm. she had a, her most famous quote was, I don't wrestle. I fucking beat bitches up. And so that's what I was thinking of. Like, <laughs> I want that on a t-shirt. <laughs> Um, okay, let's go ahead and get into the mess. Um, what's the messes? Where's the messes? You want to start out with something nice or something wretched? No, let's do wretched. I was looking at these Oscar clips and who child. Okay, let's start with the Oscars then. So, last night was the Oscars, yeah, aka the Academy Awards. I remember growing up thinking like it was just the fanciest shit ever. I remember I had to watch it as a kid because I wanted to see what they was wearing. Yeah. Because we didn't have social media really like that. So it was like, this is our chance to see celebrities in real life. Uh, I didn't watch it. I only saw clips. Did you see any clips? I saw some clips, but I, I seen this Ken performance and uh, it was cool. He could sing. I, I'd be forgetting he could sing. I don't know how I forgot, but yeah, he he's a singer. So, yeah. So some highlights is definitely uh, Ryan Gosling. Apparently mm-hmm. it was like top secret. Everyone was surprised. He performed... Um, the Ken song from the Barbie movie. Yeah. And he starts out in the audience and he gets up on stage. He sung live. I was pleasantly surprised to see that he was singing live. Sounded um, good. My White Chocolate King continues oh to be excellent. He's an excellent singer, dancer, um, performer, actor, uh, fine as fuck. Put some respect on his name. Oh my God. Um, he did so well. Don't forget, he was in the Mickey Mouse Club, so he's been about that life. Not the Jodeci. Singing Jodeci since he was in diapers. Don't mess with him. Oh, my God. Um, another highlight was Billie Eilish. She also sung What Was I Made For from the Barbie movie. And she got a standing ovation, which was, huh? was really cool. Like She had the cutest expression. She was like so surprised that people were giving her a standing ovation. That's That looked like a, a hard as fuck song to sing live. Because it's like so much of it is like almost like a whisper tone. Mm-hmm. Um, but she did an amazing job. I love Billie Eilish. You like her? I haven't listened to her music. I don't really know much about her. I ain't going to lie to you. <laughs> She's so unproblematic and cute. Like Renee Rapp. I just, those are my white girls that, that I stand for. Those two. I those keep two telling only. myself I'm going to sit down and listen to them one of these days. I just, I just be seeing her looks all over the timeline. Both of them anyway, but. Billy eyelash. I always just see her outfits, and I'm you like, said eyelash. Wow. I said, <laughs> wow. Eyelash. <laughs> wow. They keep calling her eyelash, so it's stuck in my head. It's not. <laughs> That's the name of the episode. Mary, don't fuck with Billy. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Done. Yo, no. But yeah, no. Nah, I gotta go listen to her one of these days. I did not watch the. Uh, I didn't watch the Oscars. I did see like the list of movies and winners and i'm like damn maybe i should go back and watch what is it called oppenheimer uh i've never seen it i've never had a desire to see it but yeah cillian murphy won for best actor oppenheimer won for best picture emma stone won best actress for poor things um best song went to billy eilish best director went to oppenheimer best supporting actor went to oppenheimer Oppenheimer a lot they they took a lot, and the part that really gets me is the fact that the only thing Barbie won was the Billie Eilish song. Damn. And everybody that I've ever heard talk about those two movies, because they came out at the same time, talks about how Barbie was better than Oppenheimer. I, I can't even say I have a dog in that fight, because I finally watched Barbie, and it was all right, but I don't think I really care for it, and I have yet to see Oppenheimer. I'm... Looking at how many awards it took kind of has me curious because before I had no no interest mm-hmm. in watching it. But now I'm like kind of curious to win this many damn awards. This movie better be fire. Well, it's free on like Peacock or Paramount or something like that. So we can watch okay. it together just like we watched Mia Coppola. Mia Coppola? <laughs> <laughs> you you gonna abandon me halfway? Cause I feel like you abandoned me. You I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I'm like, nigga, an orgy. You ahead of me. And then you was I gone. I couldn't do it. 
Yeah, I, I couldn't do it. It was too much. But um, congratulations to the winners. I do kind of want to see it because I do think Cillian Murphy is a great actor. I do also want to see Poor Things with Emma Stone. I heard that movie was so fucking weird. I want to see it. Oh, Lord. Is this going to you know be I a, love weird a shit. salt burn again? I hope so. Oh, no. I hope so. But no, I, I haven't heard coming. that it's like gross or anything like that. I just heard that she's like a, a super weird person. Okay, so last night. What happened? The thing is, is like, I think women basketball players are hot as fuck, right? Like, Mm -hmm. they be tall and aggressive and sometimes masculine. And that is my type, right? I love me a stud. So I I have, I, I keep track of my WNBA and my women's basketball games. So last night, Mm -hmm. there was a game um with LSU women's basketball team versus the South Carolina team Flage was trying to get the ball from a player from the South Carolina team and in doing mm. so she act it looks like it could have been an accident it could have been on purpose she's pulling the girl's jersey oh but you know it was a big no go in basketball in general I think mm. that's a foul anyway as she's walking away another girl from the South Carolina team kind of walks on her face um Flouch, I'm just gonna call her Flouch because we we cousins at this point. Pushes her away a little bit, and then all of a sudden, this this six seven uh, light skin walks up to her and pushes her clear across the field. Whoa! Well, I'm exaggerating. She pushes her down because like there's at least a foot difference between these two these two Jesus women. Christ. But That's her name is Camilla <laughs> Camilla uh, Cardosa, FJ's <laughs> brother. Um, jumped on the court in reaction. Like he hopped the thing past security to, you know, kind of defend this. It was going on with his sister. Mm. Um, he didn't touch the girl who pushed her, at least not from what I can see. It's from both sides, get off the bench, which is a big no-go. Everybody on the South Carolina team was ejected from the game, except for one person who stayed on the bench. And uh, the LSU bench, the whole team was ejected as well for what? leaving the bench during the fight, except for Angel Reese. Angel Reese <laughs> in the video. Little to the side. Yeah. Like she's she's visibly limping when this happens. She looks up, mm-hmm. she sees everybody's running past her. She's like, I ain't doing this shit. And she goes yeah. and she hobbles and sits down. The internet does what the internet does. And um People were saying my my cousin sister started it. People were saying, you know, the tall girl from South Carolina started it. People were saying Angel Reese is a punk and a fake teammate and a fake friend. Damn. She's not about that life because she didn't jump into the fight. Didn't you just say she was limping? She had to do a press conference and basically say, uh, as a person at my status, she put status in all caps. I love this because she's like, I'm <laughs> she's like, now that I'm that bitch. Um, sometimes you have to walk away from certain situations. Mind you, the play before that, I had rolled my ankle again and was walking to the bench. I always ride for mine. I'm super proud of this team and super excited for March. Go Tigers. Right? Damn. But people are still not happy that people think that, you know, she's fake or whatever. In the clip that I saw, she looked like she was injured. The girl who pushed her, Camilla Cardosa, she made an apology talking about, I extend mm-hmm. my sincerest apologies for my actions. The part that really, really sucks, though, is that Flasher's brother got charged with disorderly conduct and assault what? for jumping over the table at the basketball game. Did he hit anybody? No, but he How got charged that? with assault and battery in the third degree. The police department released a statement. And they said, while Melton, that's a hell of a name. That, that's a hell what? of a name. <laughs> that you stopping at his name? Would you fucking do your name, Melton? I don't think so. No, that's not a moanable name. Um, let, me, let, me, let me try. Uh, Melton, <laughs> nah, can't do it. Not, I told Instantly you. Try. I, <laughs> I told you that's not a moanable name, bro. If it's not, it's not a moanable name. You're going to have to have a nickname or something. I don't think I could. I don't think I could do. I don't think I could fuck a berry either. Like a uh, berry. No, I don't no think, berry. I don't. <laughs> I'm weak. <laughs> um, that's, that's not moanable. But the police department said uh, when Milton was jumping over the barrier, the victim was sitting at the scorer's table at the edge of the court. To get over the table, Milton came from behind the table, pushed down the victim's head. 
and stepped on her shoulders to jump over. So I guess this happened off camera because I didn't. Oh, that's a soul. I guess so. Um, so they're unsure whether or not he is posted bond, whether or not he's still in jail. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's not against a basketball player. It seems like it's against a random person who was in the audience, I suppose. So he jumped over this person's head um, off this woman's head to jump over to get to his sister and help his sister. What do you think about that? Do you think he overreacted? I think that the adrenaline rush and the concern and the care he has for his sister and he went into overdrive. But I'm also thinking about a scenario where I feel like ASAP Rocky did something similar and nothing came from that. Matter of fact, the lady was excited when she realized who he was. Like he was trying to get past her. She wouldn't move. He just jumped over her head, pushed past her. (laughs) And I'm like, and she's like, oh my God, it's it's that Rocky. And I'm like, nigga, he just trampled over your head. Can we do that one more time? (laughs) She was like, oh my God, it's it's that Rocky. (laughs) And I'm like, bro, he just blue skidoo weekend too on your fucking head. Like, (laughs) you not mad? She's like, oh my God. Like, she was fucking stoked. I'm like, oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) While I appreciate and applaud the fact that he came to the rescue of his sister because I can't think of a single situation in life where a man would have done that for me. I really wish he hadn't have hopped over this woman's shoulders. I yeah. mean, that's the There's only thing no I would have changed. Way. There's no other way around. Like, you couldn't have gone around, take the two seconds to, like, sidestep her. You just you just said, fuck Lulabelle. We just, go, like, yeah, you could have sidestepped. I'm pretty sure there was a, a pathway that didn't involve somebody head and shoulders. But um, I do understand adrenaline and fear. I hope he gets dismissed of these charges. Because honestly, I would want to be the shoulder that would help this man. Get to, his and, yeah, I, I, I would be on TikTok right now. Be like, hey, it's your hey, girl. that shoulder. <laughs> well, it's like, say, this this the one. This clavicle right here did the business oh last night. Oh, my God. Yo, shoulder shots, shoulder picks, fifty dollars each. Here's my cash up. Think I like, won't. I was that shoulder, nigga. This <laughs> is an unfuckwittable so- sho- shoulder. <laughs> I'm about to say soldier, but shit, it all goes. So no, I I definitely agree. Kim Kardashian and Odell Beckham Jr. apparently just officially made their public debut. Oh, um, they went. I heard they snuck off. Yeah, they went to Jay-Z and Beyonce's Oscar after party, which I don't understand why I continue to not get an invite year after year. Oh, my God. Because it's like Beyonce, we're both. I just did a cosplay of you. We both Creole. You know, we both from Houston, so on <laughs> and so forth. Things of that nature. It's like, come on, come on. Um, But they they haven't confirmed it, but when I look at the video, because of course it's posted on TMZ, when I look at the video, Mm -hmm. it's open body language. His face is really close to hers. They've been spotted together multiple times. Um, Again, while intimate. So she's back on Black Men. She left? Pete, uh, Pete uh, Davidson. I feel like she'd be with them white men for like five minutes. One Wasn't she she literally married to one for like a month? Well, Chris Humphreys was black. Chris Humphrey, Chris Humphreys is black. Well, he's biracial. 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 <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that. Every <laughs> time, that's got to be a thing. Every time we say biracial, <laughs> we got to say that. Bruh, I just naturally start body rolling. <laughs> Obama is a mulatto. Oh, no. Yo, I'm still mad about that episode name, bruh. I like stopped so... midstream and I'm like, <laughs> no, the fuck she didn't. Yes, I hope wherever that young lady is, she's enjoying the finest of rice and peace. Um, <sighs> but do you have any opinions on this couple? Uh, Kim Kardashian and Odell Beckham Jr.? I don't. Um, honestly, like I said, I, I saw something about them dipping off after an after party. I'm like, good for them. If, you know, if... Like leaving together? Yeah. Like, that's, that's what the article, the article says, something about them dipping off together. And I was like, oh, okay, turn up. So she she getting some new dangling. Like, hey, ain't that's gonna be it. a messy, treacherous breakup. Oh my god, it's gonna happen. Not because of her, because Kim actually, for as much as people want to hate Kim Kardashian, people hate Kim Kardashian for the same reasons they should hate Kanye West. Mm. Because 
she is actually remarkably for her to have so much success at a real being a reality television star. She is actually surprisingly really private about her relationships. She's not like a Taylor Swift making you know songs and, songs and whatever else with it. She's not like Kanye making tweets and Instagram posts. Like she, for the most part, because I think she is grown enough to realize like her kids are going to see all this shit one day. She don't really be saying nothing. I feel like the messiness is going to come from him. And the reason why I say this is because I do not trust men with white teeth, a groomed beard, and uh, a hoop earring. Wait, like, what's, what What the fuck? That's the, that's Wait, the what is this combination? What? Why? That's, I call that the bussy. So the bussy combination Nigga. is when you have a perfectly groomed beard, you have zoom whitened teeth, and you have solid gold earrings in your ear i'm just i'm just saying it gives very much drake energy and i think he's gonna be (laughs) (laughs) am i wrong am i right like i feel like you're not wrong uh speaking of kardashian though let's go ahead and talk about this um Uh so i actually don't know if kanye's new album has come out yet um but i know on it he had a track with Northwest, mm-hmm. um, which, you know, is adorable, I suppose. Um, but people were talking about the fact that Northwest has been in the studio late, like late at night. Not like, um, a, like a damn grown up. Yeah. Making music. Um, she was at her dad's listening event last night in Phoenix, um, I guess, Arizona. And she announced at her dad's listening party that she's working on an album. Do you want to take a guess as to what the album is called, Mira? I'll give you a hint. Northwest? It's a play off the title of one of Kanye's most prolific albums. I have no clue. It's called Elementary School Dropout. I was about to say, is it on graduation or, but damn, not college dropout. (laughs) Elementary school, elementary drop school out. dropout, which you know Hello? is cute, right? It's cute. Yeah, let's play on but daddy, then, but no and Kanye, I'm concerned. But then I was thinking about the context of what we talked about last week. Mm-hmm. Now he had leaked the name of his kids' elementary school. So I was like, what kind of influence does Kanye have if he's actively trying to get his kids kicked out of this school? And then a week later, his daughter's announcing the name of her album is called Elementary School Dropout. Is there What's happening? Possibly a correlation. I hope not. You know what I'm saying? If you that unhappy, find a better school, but don't be doxing a damn school. And I don't know. Like, I do feel like she shouldn't be spending all these hours in the studio as a little kid. Let her work her way up to that when she's of age. And she's just so impressionable. I don't feel like she's probably in the studio for like long hours because I feel like. Well, I don't know how much control Kim has over her kids when they're with Kanye. I feel like probably less control than he has when the kids are with her, probably. Mm-hmm. Um, just because of how he reacts. But I hope, I hope, I mean, I ain't trying to talk bad about no kid. And I'm not about to start because I have nothing bad to say about her. But I will say, like, when she was born, a lot of people did have the thought, like, what kind of kid... Is gonna exist when these are your parents. I remember a lot of people yeah. were like, were like on that. So I'm just hoping, like, you know, she can grow up to be like grounded. You know, she doesn't let this industry get to her. And more importantly, I hope she don't turn out like her daddy. <laughs> just please don't. Damn. I don't want her. I don't want to open up Instagram or whatever it's called in the year 2040. Um, it's probably gonna be called something like Pyrex. Oh my God. Xenon, Warrior Princess, Girl of the 21st Century, whatever the fuck they're going to call social media then. I don't want to log in one day and see Northwest on live doing a Kanye rant. I don't, I don't want to hear it. Um, good luck, young lady. The album, I'm sure, will be adorable. I think would you so listen too. to Would you listen to a Northwest album? I would. I would. would I, you think think it's sound cool. like? I think it's going to sound better than I expected to because as a, like, I'm thinking, oh, a little kid, it, that shit might be fire. You know, so um, I'm actually curious. I was debating whether or not I was going to talk about this. Uh oh, <laughs> what happened? Mike Tyson. Oh shit! Is going to step into the ring to fight Jake Paul. The match 
is taking place this summer in July in my state, of course, Texas, because we always with the bullshit. I was about to say, Texas um, is chaotic as hell. They will be uh, fighting against each other. And Jake Paul said, it's crazy to think that in my second pro fight, I went viral for knocking out Nate Robinson on Mike Tyson's undercard. Now, less than four years later, I'm stepping up to face Tyson myself to see if I'll have what it takes to beat one of boxing's most notorious fighters and biggest icons. How bad you think this little white boy going to get beat up? Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I've seen a video of him working out recently of Mike Tyson doing his stuff and he still looks like he he still moves and swings as the same way he did 20, 30 years ago. So if he gets fucked up, I feel like he's getting paid to fuck up. Like if he gets his you ass know, beat, he's getting paid to get his ass beat. I was thinking that I was thinking that I was like, who is more likely to take a fall? Cause it's going to be a fake fight. There's no way it's going to be real. Right. So I was like, like I wonder eat that nigga for breakfast. So we agree, like, if Jake Paul ends up getting winning, it's because Mike Tyson took a payout. And you know what? That's exactly what's going to happen, because I feel like Mike Tyson definitely needs the money more than Jake Paul does. Because didn't Mike Tyson file for bankruptcy? That's a sad reality, if that's what... I'm I'm not sure. But if that's what that is, that that sucks, because that man was very important to boxing and the history of boxing and shit like that. So that that fucking sucks. I'm like, now, if he lose, he got paid to lose. Okay, so yeah, he did. The first thing I see is because at first I was like, "Am I confusing Mike Tyson with MC Hammer?" Um, no, no. It, Mike Tyson earned four hundred million dollars and filed for wow. bankruptcy. What the fuck did you spend your money on? Yo, money mismanagement is hella common, and the more money you got, if you don't get a handle on it, the worse it gets. You will literally sit there and ask yourself, where did that money go? I made such a... I can't even imagine what that feels like for fucking millionaires. And apparently he still owed $13 million to the IRS, $4 million to the British government. He British? Owed seven, I don't know how the fuck. What the fuck he, he owed to the riggers? Oh my God. He owed seven. Siete. He owes seven law firms. Jesus Christ. He owes his financial manager half a million dollars. He owes a music producer half a million dollars. He owes his trainers a million dollars. Like, I can't... How you get into that much debt, bro? Yeah, he taking the fall. Especially if they say they'll pay him more to do that than win. Yeah. Uh, Let's talk about Black Love. Oh, Lord. I love Lupita Nyong'o. I love her so much. Too. And good actress. Beautiful woman. Yes. And I remember like she had went through like a public scandal with her man last year. I guess he cheated on her or whatever. He, but he did some bullshit. I saw the post. It was some she sounded like she was going through it. But now, um, we finally have couple pictures. I love this couple. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this out there. I love this couple. <laughs> the pictures of uh, Lupita on the beach. It looks like a white sand beach uh, above my tax bracket with her beautiful, flawless, buttery skin in the sun with her yellow bikini on vacation with her man, her man, her man, Joshua Jackson, a.k.a. Pacey from Dawson's Creek, um, a.k.a. Charlie from Mighty Ducks 1, 2, and the 3. Damn, that was him? Yeah. <laughs> You know how many times I watched Mighty Ducks and I ain't never made the fucking connection? <laughs> what? Nigga. I love Mighty Ducks and I never made that connection. Okay, okay. Before I, because what we're about to talk about is way more interesting. The Mighty Ducks is a little bit more interesting than this. Well, which one was your favorite? <laughs> one, two, or the three? Shit, it's between one or two. Um, Damn. It's probably one, but I feel like one beats everything because of like pure nostalgia. But like, I really like two. So I'll say two. Let's talk about Mighty Ducks one though. Because the premise of that movie is fucking wild. Because think about it. You have a lawyer Mm -hmm. who gets drunk, drives, and gets into a car accident. And he, one, doesn't get disbarred. And Mm. then he puts him in charge of impressionable young children. What the fuck? That was a dumbass. Like, (laughs) I don't know who the hell I did. Can you imagine? Like, 
yo, like I love that movie, but like translating that in real life is crazy. Like he, y'all did what? He you did drunk what? drove and you got community service with kids. That that don't make no fucking sense. And you're supposed to be a lawyer. Double whammy. Um, but the only correct answer is um D2, the Mighty Ducks, is by far the superior film. Then D3, then D1. Oh, you like three better than one? I barely even, I'm not going to lie. I've seen three, but I I barely remember it. I feel like two was the best one for me and then one, then three. But I liked three because that's when the, like, the fucking happened. Wait, what? Oh my God, Mira. Wait, what? wait. Okay. Before we get to the actual topic, have you heard of the movie Havoc? No, I'm scared. The next watch party you do, bitch, watch it. It's on Tubi. It came out in 2003. Oh, like Tubi movie. It stars Anne Hathaway, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Channing Tatum. Nigga, what? Anne Hathaway says nigga so many times in this movie. Oh, that I- shit. Oh, yes. that. Okay, I know what you're talking yes. about now. She that was movie? singing Tupac. I was like, what the fuck is this? How do you want it? Oh my God. How do you feel? Give it up. Body up. rolling, like, singing Tupac yo, like a I, fucking clown. That movie, I've never seen a movie with less thought in my whole life. Literally, the plot line doesn't exist. And I had to look it up. This movie had a budget of like 14 or 15 million dollars. Box office was like 300000 But that's not the part that really got me. Other than the fact that hearing Joseph Gordon-Levitt say, what y'all niggas doing? What y'all up to? And the high-pitched Chris Tucker voice will forever be ingrained in my brain. Oh, my God. And this you, actually got me. That bullshit. I, you, ma'am. Uh, listeners, just like I told y'all to get high. I'm sorry. <clears throat> get under your uh, legal... Um, I don't know, your legal uh, gateway, whatever that is. I told y'all to watch the J-Lo movie and enjoy it. I'm telling y'all right now, watch Havoc, Under the Influence, 10 out of 10, banger. Did um, they die? But Havoc, I'm going to be 100% honest. I don't remember. How high was you? I, I, no, I remember the end happening and being like, what happened? Damn. Havoc, if you ever want a truly terrible, and I mean... <laughs> Truly fucking terrible movie to watch. That is it. It made J Lo's movie look like Oppenheimer. I'm sure. Damn, we still gotta watch Oppenheimer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to has like what is it? Reluctantly watch it, but I'm gonna check it out. And today we're gonna delve into our topic. Look, now I'm doing a little body. I gotta do a little shimmy. We're gonna delve in today's topic. Um, which is discussing our favorite video games and games that meant a lot to us growing up. I know for me personally, I've been a gamer for over 20 years at this point. I say a good 26 years of my life, I've been on video games. So there's definitely been a lot of steps and stages that I've navigated throughout my gaming journey, throughout childhood, throughout adulthood. You know, your taste in games definitely change and evolve sometimes Mm -hmm. as you age based on what's going on in your life. So we're going to name some of our favorite games. Sadie's, are there any like favorite games that come to mind when you think of like. So the first game I want to mention is Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 three and four. What happened was I was in school and I remember I I grew up in a really small town and we had a coffee cafe built. And in the coffee cafe, it was very much like skater, emo, hot topic. There was a skating ramp inside, like a skate park. Um, There was a stage for bands to play. Um, I totally remember being in love with the drummer of one of them, but that's another time. But they also had like different stations um, with PlayStation on it to play games. And I remember where I went because my fat ass really wanted to try a Frappuccino. I had never had a Frappuccino before. Mm -hmm. And everybody at school was talking about how good this Frappuccino was. So I got one and I remember taking a sip and forever changed. Like best fucking thing I ever had in my life up to that point. 
But I sat down at one of the gaming stations and Tony Hawk Pro Skater was on it. And I remember I started playing it. And I made it a point after school to go when as much as I could to play it as much as I could until eventually I got it myself. I got the console, I got the game. And I remember I was cranking out me and my sister were playing that game for upwards of seven to eight hours every single day in the summertime. Like it was, I remember my first goal was to get a million points in a level. And I had did that. Like it was, it was serious. I loved that game. I always played with Steve uh, Caballero. Shout out if you know what I'm talking about. And that's my number one choice. What's your number one choice? I would say my first pick is definitely Marvel vs. Capcom 2. And also, before I even get into Marvel vs. Capcom 2, I want to ask you something. Have you ever played Amped? Because I played hella Tony Hawk, I played SSX Tricky, and I played Amped. I used to I played SSX game. Tricky, like, oh, yeah, Tricky, but not Amped. Amped, yeah, that was my jam. It's like a snowboarding game. I, I think I played it on Xbox, like the first Xbox. I used to live on that game. But when I was younger, my brother coming home with the Dreamcast and how excited I was at, like, how fire that Dreamcast look compared to like our other consoles because by this time I had my Nintendos I he had his Playstations we had you know a lot of consoles and stuff in the house already my eldest brother is one of the main reasons why I game as much as I do I wouldn't even say he one of he is like the reason or he's the person that introduced me to gaming growing up so we used to play a lot of fighting games together Mm -hmm. And I just remember those days where we would sit in the living room area, sit in the living room and just play Marvel versus Capcom. I still remember every time I hear the Capcom sounds and the intro sounds from the menu, I still get taken back to those moments in childhood. We're just spending days and it used to be hot as hell in that house sometimes days in the summertime, just whooping each other's ass in Marvel versus Capcom and I guess he's a big part of the reason why um, I'm not going to say I'm like super good at fighting games, but I feel like most like if you're unless you're like a professional fighting game player, you probably not going to beat me because it got to the point where I started whipping my brother's ass and he's really <laughs> good at it. So I've never played that Marvel versus Capcom 2 new i think it was new age of heroes they had the intro i love that game so much like that gonna take you for a ride that was literally my like sub alert for years come through come through <laughs> it's colorful it was gorgeous i love the fighters i i loved everything about that game like some days i randomly just look up the soundtrack music on spotify i have been yet to been able to find it on Spotify so I have to like go listen to it on YouTube um I love those fucking combo what I, I guess I'll call it like a ult like the combo ults when up, up, everybody down left, right, left. yeah like everybody hit their ultimate and you just see just this rock you just get rocked from one side of the screen see, like I, I was a Mortal Kombat girly I was oh, a Mortal Kombat I used to be girly. scared of Mortal Kombat I played more as an adult than I played as a kid because Mortal Kombat used to give me nightmares <laughs> Let, let me tell you why us as kids were smarter than today's kids. Because we actually had to memorize the special moves. Them 12 to 15 fucking buttons in a certain order. Damn. Fatalities. Yes. <laughs> and then once you hit it, like, especially if you had, like, people around you, like, don't don't go over to a friend's house or have your friends come over and everybody watching y'all fight and you hit that special move. Oh. It's like... <laughs> I remember I was fucking with some guy in college and he brought me to meet his friends and I came with my fucking PlayStation 3 in a bag mm. with a bunch of games and they was like, oh, she game for it? They was like, this shit fake. This shit fake. Then we play it. We on Mortal Kombat and they was like, wait, she's actually doing the fatalities. Like, this is yep. for real. Like, you really... I said, yes, I really play video games. Yo, she really... They looking through the bag. They could... Conf- she got two controllers, nigga. She game for real. Like, good times, good times. What's, what's your next game? Wait, hold on. But that triggered a memory of mine. So I told what you about you the, the internet cafe that, that I grew up watching or playing Tony Hawk. Mm-hmm. The guy I was in love with, who was a drummer of a band who also was my coworker mm-hmm. at my first job. I remember him telling me, you can't beat me in Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Oh, not you. You can't beat me. And so me, I'm like, oh, we're flirting. Okay. We're making a date. We're making a date per. 
Turns out he only likes small white girls, but that's fine. But anyway, we play and I whooped his ass so significantly. He probably thinks about it every day when he wakes up in the morning. It's like, damn, Mercedes really fucked me up that bad. And then he starts thinking about his job. <laughs> that's how you Zach, do him. Zach, if you ever hear this, I wanted you. Oh my God. <laughs> and you did want me, you son of a bitch. Um, the game I was thinking of is Jet Set Radio Future. Did you ever play Jet Set Radio Future? I did not. I heard of it, but I didn't play that. Oh my gosh. I fucked that game up. That <laughs> and SSS Cookie. <laughs> I fucked it up. That's because the soundtrack was fire. I'm cooking for my son and his wife. It's his 30th birthday. It's all like random fucking music. <laughs> She talk about that how like the soundtracks of games like if a, oh like i know God. tony hawk pro skater the soundtrack was for sale like people bought it yeah no those soundtracks was immaculate i even found a youtube channel last night that makes music that is supposed to be reminiscent of like late 80s early 90s music soundtracks mm-hmm. and they have like the artwork and the music to go along with it and it is so good like i was just like this is great what the hell like i didn't realize just how fire like this shit is fire should i do my second one Mm -hmm. my second favorite is a game that a lot of y'all probably haven't heard of but i clocked upwards of six or seven thousand hours in it whoa but the game is called rainbow six siege oh wow um it's still played to this day it's still a top category on on Twitch, but I I was obsessed with it. I played it all day long. And this was long, way, way, way before I ever became a streamer. Way before. So you know I must have really loved this game. But it's <laughs> it's by Tom Clancy. And you're basically an operative. There's a whole gag of operatives. I remember when it first launched, there was only like eight or nine operators total and now they have like well over 50 i'm sure jesus um because i haven't played it in in quite a while um but basically it's a 5v5 you're fighting against other players online and you your job is to either defend your property um or to attack it and either like plant a bomb or secure the area there's steal a hostage there's different scenarios um, and it really was that simple. That's literally it. You just have different gadgets, different abilities, but that was literally it. And then you switch sides. There's this streamer called Narc- Narcoleptic Nugget, who still streams this game pretty much every day still. And I found his video on accident. And I remember watching him play the game and he played it in a way that made me influenced to buy it. I had never played an FPS before. I had never played a PC game before. And I downloaded this game and proceeded it. I made so many friends off of it, which turned into offline friends. Mm -hmm. I actually had a boyfriend that I met through that game for a small period of time. I mean, I would never do that now, but I remember playing the game. And then you have like teammates, you have a crew, and you're just talking every day. And then you all make plans to meet up. Um, That was actually the first Asian guy I ever dated. It got me through a lot of hard times. It got me through several breakups. It got me through family losses. Um, It was just something about being able to just keep a game really, really simple and having teamwork. I had never played a collaborative game before. And it was hella fucking dope. Um, So yeah, Rainbow Six Siege by Ubisoft. Amazing. Damn, I, 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 why well, I would have never even thought about Rainbow. I watched a couple of streams of it over the years, and mm-hmm. I was like, damn, people be playing the hell out of this game. It reminds me, um, act, your story actually reminds me of when I first got introduced to FPSs, because up to that point, I was Nintendo. I played my Mario's. I was hell. I was playing Sims, all type of. I was playing everything else. And one day in middle school. This boy traded me, I think, what was that? I think I traded him Sims 3 for Halo 3 or one of the Halos. That nigga never got it back. And (laughs) I never got Sims back. And I think we was okay with that. Like, I think dude's name was Peter. He gave me his (laughs) Halo. And 
I gave him sins. Peter, if you're listening to this, you you are eligible for a small claims court if you want to take Mira. I got her full government name saved. That's crazy. Just hit me up. I'll I'll slide it to you for $10 on my cash app. We never got each other's games back because after that, I became totally freaking immersed in Halo. I think it was Halo 2 or 3. I loved Halo so much. I went to the store and bought all the other Halos that I missed and played the story from the beginning all the way to the third. And then it also triggered like a Call of Duty fixation where I played all the Call of Duty titles for years. So like a few months ago, I went to Call of Duty Next and they had the jacket with all of the patches of the different brand. And I was like, talk about nostalgia. I'm like, I play all of these damn titles. I played very little online. Typically with FPSs, I would blow through the story modes. And if I wanted to play again and I got bored, I would just play on hard mode. Like I would forge my way through hard mode um, until I beat it. But I didn't I didn't fuck with online. But it had online modes where you had team batches, team death matches, fights, mm. claim the flags, all, all types. Similar to like some of the games that we have, or online games we have in like Call of Duty now. Okay. But I used to love that game. But my next favorite game, if I would have to say Sims 2 is my Next favorite game, I played Sims 2 to the floor. Sims was always a franchise I was interested in. And I remember begging my mama at Costco, give me that damn Sims, because I used to see them, woohoo, yeah, Florks. Like they just looked like they was having a time of their life on the cover of that damn game. When I would walk past it in Costco at the age of the tender age of like seven, I'm like, I want this. This shit looks interesting. Mommy said, no. It looked grown. She seen that hot date cover. She seen them getting intimate in that hot tub. It looked like they be having sex. You're not getting this. And she never got me Sims. Finally, Sims 2 comes around. I guess the marketing looked less adult to her. So she decided to let me get it this time. And that was when things changed, child. (laughs) Sims is a life simulation game where you can control the little people, tell their stories. Sometimes there's sandbox-based Sims where, like, Sims 4 is sandbox-based, Sims 3, Sims 2, sandbox-based. And then they have the objective versions where you have to reach a goal. Sims busting out, herbs, castaways, different games like that that are sandbox. Damn. La-da-da-da-da-da. Yeah, so Sims 2 was my shit. I used to sit... In the in the living room on that loud ass hee hee haw ass Dell computer, and wait a half of an afternoon for my game to load. Yes, I used to preheat my Sims game back in the day too. That's why I don't care about preheating it now because I used to have to preheat my game when Is I when I only had called? twenty gigs of CC. I call it that because you turn the game on and it doesn't start immediately because of how much CC you got. So Mm -hmm. even back at 11, 12 years old, I used to have a bunch of CC and I used to just have to leave the game on. (laughs) It used to take forever to start. And me and my mom used to have beef because I would turn the monitor off so she don't realize the computer's on. And then she would notice in the middle of the night, why are you running up my electricity? You're running up my elect... And she would turn the shit (laughs) off. And then me and her would have beef because I probably didn't save that session. And now I got to wait a half an afternoon. By the time the game load, it's going to be time for me to go to bed. But when I tell you the memories I had on that game was insane. Like that was when I discovered mods. That was when I discovered the online community for The Sims. And I discovered how you can like mod The Sims content and tell these little stories. And I was I was wreaking havoc in that game. I, I had a Sim that was a pimp. They had pimp prostitution. Like they had so much shit for Sims too, bro. <laughs> My Sim was a pimp, bro. I was living. Um. I feel like when you said Sims 2, I could like mm-hmm. hear the angels clapping. Like <laughs> um, Sims 2 holds a special place in my heart. I remember I would play that game as much as I possibly could after school. But the thing that got me was my mama started playing that game to the point where I couldn't play it anymore because she would be on the game oh, no, for six, not seven, the eight hours. Yeah. So I lost my mother to the Sims. So while I respect the Sims, that game stole away my mother for like three years. So, but I love oh that for God. you. Oh my my favorite game of all time is probably the game I've already talked to y'all about called Journey. So I'm not going to talk about it right now. We, I talked about it a few episodes ago. If you want to know more about it, I definitely will look it up Journey. 
But before I tell you my favorite one, I want to give you two honorable mentions. The first honorable mention I want to give is this game called Knockout City, which is defunct. You can't play it now. I love Knockout City. Knockout City was the first game I started um, streaming and like made it like a series. Like I played it all the time. And it's just a dodgeball game. You're on a team or you're solo and you're just throwing dodgeballs at the other person. And I got so fucking good at that game. And then they shut it down last year. And they were actually the first game, actually the only game that has ever asked me to be part of like their creator crew or to be like officially affiliated with the game. So big, big shout out to to the developers of Knockout City. I would give anything for that game to come back. And my second honorable mention is the game that kind of started my whole career that I have now. I can't fucking stand this game, but it's an honorable mention because I would not be where I am right now had I not ever played Among Us. So, Oh, not Among Us. Yeah, Among Us. I started streaming with Jesus. Among Us. This whole thing, I would not be talking to you right now, Mirror. That moment, me finding someone playing that game on their phone randomly changed everything in my life. Okay. But anyway, my favorite game of all time, I played it for the first time, maybe six months ago. People had told me it was a great game. I think it even won game of the year. Um, Someone bought me the game. I'm fortunate enough to have people from time to time gift me games on Steam. And then this was one of them. So that's the only reason why I played it because I definitely would not have played it had I had to pay for it. But this game was the first time a game ever made me cry. That sounds wild intimate. It's a game about the protagonist. It's her last day on earth and she's the last one in her family left alive. And each story you get to experience a new family member on the day of their death. They range from like in the past, like in the eighties to more current present day. You see it from their perspectives. You don't see it from her perspective. You play as this person and you act out their death. Right. Jesus. Um, the only constant in each story is that you're a, fir- you're a family member and it's first person, which is another thing that made it a whole another layer is the fact that it's the first person. You, it really feels like you're doing this. Everything I've said before this probably doesn't sound appealing, but the actual experience, there's so many moments from my childhood that were special. There's one scene where I remember it so vividly. You're a baby in a bathtub playing with bath toys. And like literally the whole thing, all of a sudden you went from one one story, you might be chased by the Grim Reaper and it's super scary. The next story, you're a kid and you're giggling and you're playing with bubbles and rubber duckies. And it's the most jarring experience to go from all these different genres of, of game. The story is amazing. The soundtrack is insane. It visually is stunning. It won game of the year. And I cannot wait to play that game over and over and over again. I was a sobbing mess. My chat was crying. Everyone was like, this game, I've never, I've never played a game that fucking thoughtful, transformative. The name of the game, by the way, is called What Remains of Edith Finch. Oh, I have that. That's what that was? Yes. And it doesn't look like it would be. On the Epic Store. Yeah. Okay. Edith Finch. <sighs> Amazing. Let me just tell y'all, it won BAFTA Game Awards for Best Game. Damn. It won uh, South by Southwest winner in excellence. It won the Italian Video Game Awards, the Official Game Awards, PC Gamer, Gamer Game of the Year, Game Informer Game of the Year, PlayStation.net Game of the Year, um, Game Blog Game of the Year. It won everything. It, it's fucking amazing. What remains of Edith Finch? And that's my favorite game of all time. Damn. Go check that out. I, well, I know what I'm downloading. Um, Cause like I said, I, I have it, but I, I never dug into it. That's yeah, a lot I had of it in emotions. my library for months before I played it. I was like, this is going to be okay, so it's fun. not just me. Yeah. I'm like, you don't know what to expect, but I will mm-hmm. definitely say that I'm proud of a lot of these like newer game devs and like, these people are out here making some fire ass games, especially the indie developer. They're they are out here making some very amazing, thoughtful, well thought out games. And you can tell, like, as you play the game from the rooter to the two, that this was well thought out. You know what I'm saying? 
but I do want to give some honorable mentions to some games. And one of my, I guess, honorable mentions is a game that I love to hate as a kid on um, my, was that Super Nintendo? I played a lot of Goof Troop. I love <laughs> yep. a lot of Goof Troop. And I hated it because cool. at that age, it was super hard for me. I I told myself, I'm going to go back, you know, figure out what I got to do to go find it and play it again as an adult. But as a kid, that game used to beat my ass. And also, Donkey Kong 64 was a big um, fan favorite in the crib. Like that, that intro song go hard. Like we used to be just dancing around the crib to that intro song. But that was a game that also beat my ass in the later stages that... I had to like get my big brother to beat for me. So <laughs> one of my one of my things is to go back and beat the end of Donkey Kong 64 by myself cuz I definitely did not when I was little. But my favorite game right now is the Final Fantasy remake. I regret not playing it when it first came out four years ago. I very much regret not playing it. I hadn't touched a Final Fantasy title since I was about five years old when I used to sneak and steal my brother's PlayStation games to play on my own PlayStation because I had a PlayStation, he had a PlayStation, and I used to sneak in his stash and steal his games when I got bored with mine. It's just been like, wow. I'm still like coming together to like learn the stories, learn the characters after watching like almost everybody around you like openly love on and lust on all these characters. I feel very late to the party and I'm kind of sad about it because I, I really wish I would have gotten to gotten into Final Fantasy years ago. So I'm like the late, super, super late bloomer. Um, Have you ever played Final Fantasy? No, I've never played what? any Final Fantasy. You should. Um, I think with Final the way they did this Final Fantasy, it's mm -hmm. a lot of cinematic and like you're watching a movie and then you're playing in between it. Graphics kinda. are good. It's always oh, awesome. One thing I think we forgot to say is like you might be listening to this and y'all might not be gamers. I will say Edith Finch is absolutely beginner friendly. Sims also, I would say, is beginner friendly as well. So if you've never really played PC games or whatever platform, I would feel confident in saying those two games are something that you could pick up. I think so. Yeah. Since you play Sims on mobile, too. So I know a lot of people play mobile games. They got the mobile Sims. You might be sitting there, you know, watching TV and all you're going to hear is <laughs> yips. Your phone is calling you, but <laughs> it's fine. Um, so I guess that'll do it this week for our our sharing of our favorite games. We will take a quick break and we will be right back. This week I've decided to do a little something a little bit different where I'm going to pick some of the wildest scenarios that I've found on Reddit. First topic, it says, my partner's mother gets in his way. We're breaking up, but I want to send a text to his mother before I exit to let her know that she's a disservice to her son. Is this appropriate? Ooh. Yeah, <sighs> that shit is crazy. Like, how you come out the gate like that? So, like, it starts off, she's like, when I met him, I wanted to get married and have kids. His mother wanted the same for him and pushed him to do the same. However, she always got in his way. She wanted to use my boyfriend as her personal piggy bank to fund her home renovations, make investments to secure her own future, vacations, etc., which made it hard for him to focus on us. She never really taught her son to save and invest in himself as a mother should. Instead, she was worried about her own needs and wants. Jesus Christ. She would make him spend frivolously on her siblings, etc. At one point, he even told me his mother wanted to buy a bigger house using his money before we even met. Girl. She even sat me down one day and told me that when we get married, she expects an allowance from us. <laughs> Unfortunately, our relationship didn't work out because of all the burdens placed on him. He felt like he was stretched too thin and couldn't provide for us in the way that he wanted to. And before I leave, I just want to write a text to his mother explaining this to her and ask her to back off a little so his next relationship could actually work out. I want to explain to her a mother's role is to be selfless and not to be selfish. Is this a bad idea? Oh, my God. Uh, is there a name that this person has? Should we name him? Look, I ain't seen no name. We gonna, Milton. We gonna... Milton. Why would you name him? His name is Milton. 
And her name is Barisha. Barisha. Um, oh fucking God. Barisha, the way my petty is set up, I would stay with him. I'd make him happy. I'd cook him dinner. I'd have his kids. Oh. We'd get married. Live in a house what? on a hill. I'd make a beautiful life. I'd give him good head. In the middle of head, I look up into his eyes, gone girl style, and I say, honey, I think your mom would be happier in a warmer climate. And then I would look up the most decrepit, half a star rating, about to get shut down by the cops retirement home. And I would send this leeching ass bitch there. Long game, lady. Long game, Barisha. You a sick fucking pup. <laughs> I, I'm glad that you're moving on, I will say, you know, because if he ain't going to stand up for himself, the fuck, fuck you going to do if he ain't going to stand up for his goddamn self, right? That's his mama. That's his shit. So... I feel like you wanting to tell her why is just you want to get that shit off your chest because I promise you she ain't changing. As one thing about elders, they be stubborn as hell and they ain't changing. They are usually set in their ways. I don't think that's going to give her a wake up call. It might give him a wake up call, you know, unless he wants to keep dealing with that and, and having problems and falling out with his partners because of his selfish ass mammy. So listen to me. Slide the orderly at $20 and be like, look, make sure this lady's room never hits below 75 degrees. Think big. That think is so fucking petty. You just gonna fuck up her bingo games? She shouldn't have fucking messed with me, Betty White. Oh my God. The writer is petty because the first thing they said was how they're gonna break up with this nigga, but they, she she wants to make sure to tell the mama first that it's her fault. She, she yeah. ain't about this. I mean, now I'm feeling like, damn, am I petty? Because I used to do some shit like that. Like, I'm going to cut you off, but I'm about to tell you why. Like, that's why ghosting was such a weird concept to me because I go off on people and then I block them. So I'm like... (laughs) The next message that I found, and it states, it says, my husband wants a threesome and I'm not sure. Jesus Christ. Yeah, the freaky sneaky shit. My husband and I got married. Let's, let's, I'm going to call you Ola May. no. Hattie Mae. Hattie Mae said, my husband and I got married very young and had two kids pretty quickly. They are both in college Why are you reading it like that? What? Me and my husband got married. We got pregnant pretty quickly. Pretty (laughs) quickly. (laughs) (laughs) All right, I'm going to read it regularly. It's it's not a negative. It's adorable. (laughs) It's giving show announcer. (laughs) Husband and I got married very young and we had two kids. (laughs) Two kids. Okay. Okay. Husband and I got married very young and had two kids pretty quickly. They're both in college now and we are empty nesters these past few months. Things have been going well with the kids of the house. Both my husband and I work. He does a lot of traveling and so I've been able to visit family more. Last week, we went out to dinner and my husband asked if I would be up for a threesome. I was pretty shocked and thought that he was joking at first, but he wasn't. You gotta stop. You gotta Damn, I can't I can't do my narrator voice. It's so cute. It's so funny. Oh my I wish we had video because the way this would be the perfect TikTok clip. Oh shit. Oh god. I'm sorry, I keep interrupting you because it's so fucking funny. He said that because we got married so young, he didn't get to play around during his twenties. <laughs> he said that he loves me more than anything, and that's why he wants to include me in this. I said I would think about it. And after a few days, I don't really want to do it. But I'm worried that my husband will be upset if I don't help him with this. How do I tell him that I don't want to do this? How do you tell your husband? I mean, you you, you, got, you will have a problem telling your partner you don't want to do a threesome? <laughs> First of all, I realize who you sound like to me. You sound like Sinclair James whenever she's trying to get acting jobs on Living Single. <laughs> She was, what was she clear. fucking selling on that infomercial with Max? Oh, what were they geez. selling on that episode? Yo, I don't remember. Oh my God. They were eating like, I think, grilled cheese sandwiches, maybe. Oh my God. And she was like, I'll take. Out. Oh, yeah, it was a toaster oven. She's like, I'll take two. Oh, anyway. Yeah, you're Sinclair James. Um, oh my God. <laughs> um, if I were married and I had a man with wrinkly old balls telling me that he wanted to share his wrinkly old ball. No, he wants to bring a woman? Did they say the gender? He, the I don't even think he specified it yet. Yeah, there's no gender specified. It's he like, just said oh, threesome. 
are we looking for a unicorn or are we looking for a Pegasus? Because that changes my Wait, answer dramatically. Pegasus the thing too? Or you just you, made that up? I just made it up. But I assume somebody with a dick who comes in would be a Pegasus. No? I like that. Because I was like, <laughs> hey, I've never heard that term. I'm like, Copyright. Listen, if you're listening, that's my <laughs> fucking term. I'm copyrighting that shit, <laughs> listeners. Um... <laughs> Oh, shit. Okay, assuming that, okay, I'm assuming it's a woman who doesn't want to have sex with another woman. Because, I mean, I would not be opposed to a little choo choo. Oh my God. <laughs> if she if she's saying that she doesn't want to have a threesome, but she doesn't know how to tell her husband, I can't, I'm, I'm having a difficult time here because it's like, I can't imagine having a problem telling my husband of however many decades that I don't want to share him. Like the way it would just come out of my mouth with or without, again, a samurai sword. I just feel <laughs> like if you're that hesitant, how has he behaved before when you had to set a boundary or assert yourself or just say, you know, I don't want to do this thing. No Why are you so worried about that? How does he treat you when you don't want to do something or you're not in agreement with him and not on board with something? That is is a concern in itself. The fact that you even wrote in to ask, what should I do with something that should be so simple for someone that y'all have been together, I'm estimating maybe a couple of decades because y'all have college age children. You know, y'all been together for a long ass time, more than long enough to be able to have a conversation like that. You know, so. I want to be clear, like I have zero problem with the idea of a, of someone, a spouse, ask you their significant other for this. There's nothing wrong mm-hmm. with asking. There's something wrong with asking me, knowing Damn. me and how crazy I am with mine. So that's the problem. But if I wasn't me and I was this girl, what was her name that we gave her? I would call her Hattie Mae. Hattie, Hattie Mae. Mae. Yeah. You might want to go to couples therapy. You probably need it anyway. And then while you're in couples therapy under the safety of the therapist and you feel like you have more of a safe space to talk, that's when I would lay it on them. Let them know why, whatever that reason is, whether you're not comfortable with it, whether you know you're not going to enjoy it, whether or not you just don't want to share them, which is totally, completely understandable. Let him know why. And he can let you know why he wants to. And then y'all can mutually decide whether or not you want to continue in this marriage. Because this might be a deal breaker for him or this might be a deal breaker for you, depending on how he reacts. Yeah. I just feel like threesomes are fucking, they can be fucking messy. Have you ever had a threesome? No. And I don't care to, I don't, I don't know. Like, I'm not interested in women, so I don't see the point in bringing another woman, right? And then, like, as far as men, I don't trust men to be mature enough about bringing another man into the bedroom. Niggas be having knocked down, drag out, I'm crying, you know what I'm saying? Crying, Mm -hmm. screaming and crying. When somebody asks you on a date or, you know what I'm saying, it could be the most simplest interaction with another man and they be losing their mind. So, like, actually fucking someone, like, mm -mm, I don't trust, I don't trust most men to be mature enough about that. And with women, it gets messy because I've never experienced that. Damn, I I have yet to experience that. It's just like, I I don't know. Every time I hear a scenario about them bringing another girl in the bedroom, he never know when to stop fucking her. Yeah. Matter of fact, didn't Mimi, Stevie, and Jocelyn start off as just threesomes? Not that being your goat. Listen, this is how it happens. This is how it happens. That's how it starts. Your man tries to convince you to have a threesome. You decline. He badgers you about it. Eventually, you get so worried that he's going to cheat on you anyway, you'd rather him do it in front of your face. Reluctantly agree. You have to control everything. You both have to agree on someone. Y'all get on Tinder or you go to a bar. Y'all both pick out this girl. You pick out someone that you find is the least attractive that you can get away with and he would agree to. Y'all have sex. Amazing. You're there. You realize maybe, hey, I can kiss a girl. This wasn't so bad, but it was a one time only thing. Okay. He convinces you to do it again. Y'all have sex again. All of y'all. All of a sudden he's okay. He's not asking you to do it anymore. He's not asking you for another threesome. You think this fixed all the problems in your marriage and your relationship. But no, do you know he's still fucking that bitch on the side? You're just not in the room. Don't and do that's it. How that shit go. That's how that shit be going. That's so I'm the like, way threesomes go. You're not okay with that? Move carefully. Lifetime taught me well. Lifetime movie network. Yeah, life, your movie's on head ass. <laughs> <laughs> It just stopped, but okay. Um, okay. He said, 
<laughs> and that's all for this week's advice. If you want to submit any advice to us and hear some topics and pretty much give feedback, be sure to email us at theprettypettypod at gmail.com. If you want your listener letters and feedback read by us, email us at theprettypettypod at gmail.com. Anything from you, Sadies? Yes. Uh, I would like to say a special fuck you to oh, no. the ultrasound specialist technician who was supposed to be my ultrasound this past week. Um, I had to wait several weeks to get an appointment with a doctor and then I had to wait several more weeks to get a referral to just have the test, the ultrasound. Mm-hmm. Um, I take an Uber downtown, get there. They told me I had to fast for eight hours. They said no food, no drink, not even water. I did that shit for 12 hours. I get up there. I get inside. I pay. They lead me to the back. The technician takes one look at me and says, we can't do the test. Mm? I said, huh? She said, well, we can do the test, but it won't be diagnostic. It won't work for the doctor. And I said, why? And she said, you're chewing gum. And I said, huh? I'm chewing gum. Why is that a problem? She's like, well, when you chew gum... It creates gas in your stomach and we can't see anything in your stomach. Isn't and that I'm something like, they supposed to tell you the night before? That part. So I went through and I right there, I, I got on my phone and I'm checking and I'm like, okay, there's no mention here about not chewing gum. Um, I checked the pre-check-in, nothing there. And so she's like, we can do it. Basically, we can waste your money if you want us to waste your money. So I leave. I'm fucking livid because I've been waiting months for this opportunity. Get outside to the lobby. I give, I tell the old girl. Give me my refund. I go downstairs. There's a grocery store across the street. I walk over there. I'm starving, right? I haven't eaten in a long time. I go in the grocery store. I get a few things about the salad bar, yada, yada, yada. I'm livid. I'm pissed. I call the doctor's office and I complain. I'm like, this is the third time I fasted for a medical thing and I haven't gotten medical help. Each time that happens, it ruins my blood sugar. It ruins everything. I get a migraine. I did real good Karen voice. Six minutes later, I get a phone call. It's the the lab technician again. She's like, yeah, you can come back up. You can uh, come and get your uh, test now. I said, huh? She's like, you can you can come and get your ultrasound down. I'm like, but when I was there 10 minutes ago, you said it wasn't going to be diagnostic. She's like, well, it's up to the doctor whether or not he'll be able to like use it or whatever. And I'm like, well, why are you calling me? If you don't and know what the exactly. doctor can do, why are you wasting it was my time? giving very much cover her ass. And then I was like, well, right now I'm across the street at the grocery store about to eat. I've already had two cups of water, right? Because you're not supposed to drink water. She tells mm-hmm. me, uh, I was like, I already had water. She's like, how much? I'm like, two cups. She's like, oh, well, that's okay. You can come still. And they I'm like, like okay. They're trying to grab some money. I'm like, now I don't trust you. Now I don't trust you. And I'm like, listen... I've been waiting months. I really needed this. I Ubered here. You know, it's not easy for me. And she's like, well, you can come tomorrow morning. First thing, I'll make time for you. And I'm like, the fucking switch up. So yeah, so fuck her very much. I want to give a big, 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 big shout out. The biggest shout out I've ever given. This goes out to the Irish community. Uh, Hello there. Uh, Is that uh, your Irish accent? If you have the chance to change your life, would you? That's how I get my oh, Irish accent my. by afraid, by uh, quoting brave. Um, if you have the chance to change your life, I'm part Irish. I can do that. It's not appropriation. I, but the reason why I'm giving a shout out to the Irish people is because this past St. Patrick's Day is coming up. So the grocery stores have a bunch of Irish shit, at least here, to eat mm-hmm. and try. And I tried Irish soda bread for the first time this past week. That sounds interesting. I fucked that hoe up. It was a loaf with 12 <laughs> servings. It was gone in 36 hours. Oh my God. Um, it is a cross between cornbread <laughs> and a scone, sort of. It was so fucking good. It was so fucking good. It might have been the best bread I've ever had in my life. Irish people, y'all do y'all did y'all big one with that one. That you and having your, your holiday be just about drinking. I love that. Uh, oh my God. Irish soda bread. I have it in my Instacart right now. And I was like, as soon as I get this stuff off my to-do list, I got to edit some stuff. I was like, 
as soon as I get this stuff off my to-do list, I'm going to reward myself by ordering Irish soda bread. I feel That's like I've had soda and it's, bread it's coated in sugar on good. top, too. It's so fucking... Yeah, I it's, definitely it really had is. it, and it was good. Yeah, it was really, 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 really good. It really is cornbread mixed with a scone with sugar. It's really good. And that's my favorite kind of dessert is sweet bread. I'm not a I cookie cake girl. Really good. I picked the raisins out because raisins are disgusting. But Oh, um, my God. Really he got this at Walmart? Hold on. I'm... Mm. I can't vouch for the Walmart one. I went to Sprouts. Not Sprouts. Where it was organic and fair trade. It was delicious. Yo, they sell gourmet on Amazon. Put that hole in the microwave for the 15 seconds. Tell me it won't change your life. If you like sweet, oh, listen, if you like sweet cornbread, you'll like this. That shit is good. You just took me back. Because <laughs> I haven't had this in a very long time. Um, what about you, Mir? Oh, Anything you want to get off your chest? I ain't got much to get off my chest at the moment. Um, I'm just happy about the future. Happy about bringing some structure back into my life. I'm I'm very excited about that. You know, trying to do the adulting thing. What do they say? I say, um, I say. Yes, yes. I say, I say. Damn. <laughs> well, look, I'm, look, I'm still twerking to it. So we here. <laughs> but excited about shit. I don't know. Maybe I'm just getting old. I'm excited about going to bed at a decent time and just waking up at a decent time because I keep Run telling niggas desires. go to sleep. Because you get a lot done when you sleep. I'm telling I still you. haven't been asleep. I can't wait to. Yeah, you, you need to If go this to episode bed. comes out a little bit late, maybe it comes out around 9, 10 p.m. Y'all know why I'm tired. You you need to go to fuck the bed. And and um, for those listening, y'all also need to go to fuck the bed. Get your I'm, sleep at night. I made you watch Can't Buy Me Love, right? Yes. That move that you just did reminded me of the African ant eater ritual that they did at the oh, dance. Oh, no! <laughs> dance and everybody was like uh-uh that's probably where i got it from god damn it mm. um mm. all right y'all like, let's go let's go <laughs> mary is shaking her titties um we're gonna go ahead and head out and <laughs> do grown woman shit we both hope you have an amazing week please give us a rating um wherever you listen to your podcast we'd really like to uh attract some attention um because right now we're, we're taking time out um to do this and it's costing more money than we're making so it'd be really really cool but that's all i gotta say um y'all be good masturbate oh my god even <laughs>